All right, good evening, night, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second installation of, of Computer Science Unit One in collaboration with PCSG, PCSG Private Caribbean Study Goals. PCSG, please send me the website is up. Is the website up yet? PCSG, no, it's not up yet. All right, Private Caribbean Study Goals. You could search for them on Instagram. Whoa, there's a lot of PCSG. Okay, private Caribbean study goals. Private Caribbean study goals. Instagram. Let's see. You know, we cannot come out tonight. I really wanted to get a website to show. But yeah, welcome to everybody um, on the live. You are here for Computer Science Unit 1. If you are, do let me know if you are a computer science unit one student. I would have put the link in the group chat. Yes, I did. Yeah. Right, I would have put the link in the group chat from last time. All right, so what did I do last week? You all here? Come say students, come say unit one students. Are you here? Yeah, you are not, you are. You are, you are not. Give you all two questions to do last week and we are going to correct those two questions. Today, no mods, Spanish on um, Spanish on Javish. I know you're there. Jared, have you know? I don't know. Jared probably I work to go and study. <laughs> I now have to say, I have to say Javish, 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 Javish. Jervish. I can't say Javish. Cause it's not ish. It's ish. Javish. Javish. That's the name. Yes, I am correct. With a brand new A71 and a headset. Alright, so you all here? Um who did the question from last week? We had to draw the shapes. Did you all do the question from last week where you have to draw the shapes? No, you did not. Yes, you did. Maybe, maybe not. All right, I'll probably need to operate a little bit from some feedback. So if I don't get any feedback, yeah, people forget the homework. I'm positive. That's it, they did it at all. All right, I'll just, move on from it if nobody did it that's that's cool i'll just do what i plan to do tonight which is uh um 
algorithm question. To show nested loops because that's what they asked for last week, which is nested loops. So let's try to do a nested loop. Um, Jabish boy. Very soon you're going to understand the nature of YouTube. YouTube is a um a need to use resource. It's not a go to resource. It's usually when your back is against the wall. And well, exams in reach yet, so people's backs not against the wall. So here's the question that we're going to try to do to the right hand algorithm to ask um, for 10 students, ask 10 students for their name and their nine test results. Find the average of the nine test results and display each student's average as a percentage. So we write an algorithm to ask for 10 students for their name and their nine test results. So find the average of the nine results and display each student average as a percentage. So here's how it goes. What we're doing here is we kind of imagining that the inputs that we're going to get for this would be a name. And then we're going to get nine scores, which will be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what I have to try to do is I have to try to create some sort of looping structure that will be able to get this person's name and then separate to get their nine scores. Take these nine scores, convert it to a average. Hey, look, Jared Rich, convert it to average. Print it and then repeat this process here 10 times. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to use some sort of nested loop, um, nested loop ability or nested loopingness, right? So here's how I would do the, I would do the algorithm fit, right? So let's start. So remember the question. They're asking for 10 students, but each of the 10 students has nine um, test results. So I have to find the average of those nine results. So I'm going to start algorithm to find um, average marks, right? And then I'm going to put the variables, which would be name, and mark and average and add a power count of c because i need to use loops right and i'll probably use i for an next counter i'm going to start and the start is going to be um 4c is equal to 1 to 10 do right because basically i have 10 students that i want to do this thing for so I'll just create the for loop. I'll create the for loop in advance and then start to do this, right? So for is C is equal to 1 to 10 do, I want to ask the user to put in their 9 marks. So I'm going to print, um, enter your, your name and 9 marks. So they come in on the print the name and the nine marks. And the next thing I have to do now is I have to read the name, the name. But remember, I need to get the nine marks. Um, I need to get the nine marks in a loop. So I have to say four I is equal to one, two, ten, do. I'll read the marks now. Read M. When I read the mark, I need to find the sum of them. So the sum now is going to be sum is equal to read M for mark. Yeah. Sum is equal to sum plus M. 
So I already saw one M and N.4. And before the for loop is finished, now I have to print. Now I have to calculate the average. Average AVG is equal to sum divided by was nine marks is four one to nine. Sum divided by nine. And then at the after divided by nine, I will now print um the name. Name is N. And um, name is N and average is ABG. Spanish, I said, I said not to use um, ABG in Excel. This is programming. This is um, pseudocode. Pseudocode, you can name it variable wherever you want. Right, so this is a nested for. Watch what is happening in this nested for, for your understanding. So watch. Basically, we have two loops that are taking place here. The first loop is the, the first for loop is this one here. And this is the loop that is going to do the thing. 10 times. So what is going to happen 10 times? It's going to ask for a student name and nine marks 10 times. And then this one here is the one that is going to happen nine times. What is going to happen nine times? It's going to get a half four nineteen. Okay, so we'll say four one to nine, yeah. Nine times. What am I what am I doing nine times? I am asking to read the M for mark and then sum is equal to sum plus M. And then you get the N4. And that process keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Over and over and over. Until the ten times are finished. And each time the ten times run, it's going to print out that. Then it's going to print average can print the average until the stage check behind that nested for loop anybody have any questions well any of the com size students do you have any questions do you understand it or do you need me to explain anything further now is your time to ask This is me drinking a bottle of water. Nobody has any questions? Okay. Antoine Campbell, is this C? No, this is an algorithm. If I do unit two, yeah, I have unit two videos up.
Union 2 videos all over your channel. If you want to find Union 2 video stuff, you could go to the website, makesimplett.com, go to videos, and then click on um, Comsci Unit 2 videos. And when you click on the Comsci Unit 2 videos, you may get an ad because I have eight. And then you'll see I have theory videos that explain different things in year two. And I also have um, multiple choice videos that are there. And I'm also working on the um, uh, unit two I outline that I'm working on right now for y'all. Yeah, so back to the question. Is it? Nobody from Unit One have any questions about nested nested loops. This was my one nested loop question. All right, let me draw the flow chart for it just to make sure that y'all um y'all don't die. All right, so for the same question now, I'm going to draw the flow chart for it. Right, so I'm going to take the code that I have here. The pseudocode I have here. And I'm going to take the code. And I'm going to draw the flow chart for it now. So let's see what the flow chart will look like. This is the code here. So let's see if I could convert this to a flow chart because one of the one of the things students have messed up plenty of times is simple flow charts like these. All right, so let's start. We have start because you always have start. Then we have the variables that you need, and um, we don't need variables and stuff. We just need to go from like here. So, so we have a for loop that says four C is one to ten. But remember, in a in a um in a in a for loop. You can't really represent a for loop in a flow chart because representing a for loop in a flow chart doesn't really work out too well now. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like you know when you're talking to somebody and you're having awkward conversation. Yeah, the for loop doesn't work out too well. So we have to create our while loop for it. So we have to in order to create this while loop, we have to create the variables for c, which will be equal to zero. And then I will be equal to zero because I eventually gonna have to use this I. And then I'm going to check to see while C is less than 10. If the answer is yes. Yeah, while C is less than 10. If the answer is yes, what do I do? That's not I'm gonna drag this across a little bit. So it'll be closer. Right here. Yeah. Right. If the answer C is less than 10, if the answer is yes, then my goal now is to say, all right, because C is less than 10, I have to do this instruction here, which is print enter your name. So print enter your name goes into a parallelogram. So I'll put in a parallelogram because it's the output. Print enter your name a nine marks right that's what happened there and then i'm going to read the n it's still in a parallelogram so i'll just put the read here right so i print the name and i'll read the end um what well, is going on in chat there play doing communication studies sba is mark watching class recordings or they watch my class recordings all they want by that yours all right so now after i read the n i have reached up to this line here so i've I dealt with this line and i dealt with this line now i reach here in order to deal with that line i have to now start the second for loop and i'm going to represent the second for loop in green 
so that you could understand what's happening. This second for loop is going to be for i is less than 9 because I set the i to 0 up here. So i less than 9. If i is less than 9 and the answer is yes, what do I do? I am going to read a m, which is read the mark. And then after I read the mark, I have to now calculate the sum of the marks, which is sum is equal to sum plus m. Sum is equal to sum plus m. And this for loop is going to end there. If the answer to the for loop is no, and all I want to do is just find my way back up to the top, which is like that. So I find my way back up to the top to determine. Ah, look, yeah, I messed all up there. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be able to. The one is for loop finish, I want to go somewhere up there. But if the loop is still going on, I have to go up here. But before I reach back to i is equal to 9, I have to increment the n. I have to say n plus plus. Because remember, when you're representing a for loop, you can't. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm making a mistake here. It's not supposed to be 19, it's supposed to be 9. My bad. So that's supposed to be 9. Yeah, because it's 9 times the. Um, what's your question? The question is um, write an algorithm to ask for 10 students for their name and their 9 test results. So it'll be nine, the nine test results that we get. So we check to see if i less than nine, i is less than nine, good. But because remember, we cannot represent a for loop in a flowchart, you have to represent it as a while loop. I have to make sure I do the n plus plus. I can't put n plus plus, no, that's c. Damn it, that's not how to put n is equal to n plus one. n is equal to n plus one, right? So once that n is equal to n plus one goes there, then I could safely go to the start of this loop here and go through this process nine times. Once I go through the process nine times, then I have to go back now to get to the, why I use n, I use i, I use i for the loop. i is equal to i plus one. Right, good, now it's making sense. Don't mind my i looking like a g. Wow. Yeah, right. So once I get to that i is equal to i plus one, then, I could go back to here to see how far I reach with the 10. If the answer is no, however, I want to make sure that once I reach that no, I have to set back that i to 0, right? So I'll say i is equal to 0. That way, I know the 9 times ran, and when it was finished and the answer was no because the i had already reached past 9, then I'll set back the i to 0, and now I could start back my other loop, which is to ask them for a new name. And once I read the new name and, in, and whatnot, then it will automatically go into the nine marks. But once the 10 people have elapsed, and no, I don't have 10 more people, I have a printout to do. And what I'm trying to print is, I have to do the calculation first for the average. So that's a rectangle, which is average is equal to sum divided by nine. And then I'm going to print, Name is n and average is average. And then I could stop. Well, that'll be definitely be the end of the program. And that would be the answer for this. So let me just go over it before I stop. Write an algorithm to ask for 10 students, ask 10 students for their name and their nine test results. Find the average of the nine results and display each student's average as a percentage. So I want to be able to get their 10 people, but they're given me nine test scores. So the 10 people will be represented by this loop here. So the purple loop here is the 10 people. This is the 10, All right? And then the green loop here is represented by the nine that I want to, nine marks I want to get. So if you watch it, Carefully on this side here. All the people. This is where the 10 will be checked. Once I read the name, after I read the name, um, this thing will happen here. Um, 
Oh, I'm missing C is equal to C plus one. Yeah, you are correct. Um, if the answer is yes, it would do that. Yeah, so I'd have set I is equal to zero and C is equal to C plus one. Yeah, that you are correct. C is equal to C plus one. Because that now will now say, okay, once I make it out of this nine, this loop of the nine people, add a character by one because I just dealt with one person. Yeah, you correct, um, Andre Cohen. So, yeah, that's it there. Any questions? Of how the nested loop part works. Right. All right. So if that's that's it there, then that's the lesson for tonight. Cause y'all asked me to do nested loops last week. So I came and I did a nested loops question to clarify it. If no one has any further questions, you could ask it now in the chat. If not. You can probably ask it in the comments, and when I see the comments on YouTube, I might be able to answer it. But this was this live was brought to you by PCSG, Private Caribbean Study Goals. This is their logo up here. So you could follow them on Instagram, you could follow them on um, YouTube also. And their website is coming soon. So... Geo, this is not, there's no C programming, there's algorithms. It's just the understanding of the algorithm, so it's cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, so no questions. That'll be it there for tonight. Um, If you have any further questions, I'll just keep I'll keep drilling down the list of topics that you all gave me to do. And every week, I'll just do one of them. So next week, we'll do some more. Um, we'll do some more stuff as you all come in. That's it for tonight, everybody. Thank you very much. You have a great night, great week and everything. And stay safe, sanitize, social distance, all that good stuff. And um, thank you very much for coming.